everybody's time. So let's dive in. I am going to share my screen and we are going to go through a 2024 business planning workshop. I'm also going to have this put into a PDF and I will put into our Freedom Leaders group so that you guys can utilize the, uh, that you can print this out. You can do it yourself, do it with others, whatever it is you want to do. But I 100% plagiarized and stole this from Randy Bird, who's in our, runs our Attract Boss agent attraction platform. And he plagiarized it from Brent Gove. Who knows where Brent stole it from? So the bottom line is this information and data is some stuff. I've added a few things to it that will help you guys a little bit, I hope. So, is this recorded, Marguerite? Uh, I better check. I think Thanks, so. Thanks, Frank. I was going to remind her because several me, people couldn't be on. Let me, let me, hold on a sec. Let me just double check. It says it's recording. Okay, good. Thank you, Madeline. Um, that's why we have the smart young ones here, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the point of this is, and what this whole class is designed about today is towards agent attraction, right? And one thing that I think is really helpful for all of you guys to think about is what do you really want your life and your business to look like? Let me move this off the screen here. Um, is what do you want your life and your business to look like? So for example, this is one of my favorite slides I ever saw. It talks about residual income. Can you afford not to have it? Now, some of you are young and you got a lot of time ahead of you. Not as much time as you might think you do. Some of us are a little older and we're having to restart and re-jump. But here's the reality. In order for you to earn $10,000 a month of income, getting 5% interest, not touching the principal in your bank, you would have to have $2.4 million in cash in the bank earning you 5%. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't quite have $2.4 million in the bank. And the other part of it is $10,000 a month anymore is not enough to live in, it almost seems, right? It's really not enough to live on. I mean, my son has been looking for places to live. The minimum rent is, you know, $2,800 a month. Uh, by the time you add, you know, groceries, car payment, uh, you know, if you have a car payment and, you know, medical stuff and all those things. And as you get older, you have more medical issues. At the end of the day, what kind of life can you live on $10,000 a month? If you're comfortable with that, two and a half million dollars in the bank could do it. Another way to do that is to build your revenue share organization. I have only brought on, currently have 27 frontline agents, 17 FLQAs. We'll dive into that in a couple of minutes. And that has actually ended up snowballing into 525 agents as of today, of which you guys are all a part of, right? And those agents are all around the country. We have people here today from Michigan, from Chicago, Illinois, from Florida, from Arkansas with people, uh, Tennessee, all over the place, right? I didn't build and grow all of that, but that is the compound fact, which uh, Albert Einstein used to say, compound, compounding interest is the eighth wonder of the world, right? Because there's also that story, and I'm going to screw it up. I need to write it down because I can't remember. What would you rather have? Would you rather have somebody hand you a million dollars or give you a, have a penny double every day for 30 days? Right? Well, the compounding effect means that that penny that gets doubled every day is far more than the million dollars you would get if you got a million dollars on that day. So the thing is, if you have not been investing in your life or have been not able to, or maybe you've invested and lost it, which, you know, several of us have been through that a few times. The bottom line is, do you realistically think in the next five years to 10 years, whenever you're thinking of retiring, you could have saved $2.4 million and have it in the bank? If not, the best thing you can do is to go out and attract agents. The best thing you can do is to build an EXP organization in addition to your current production, nobody's asking you to stop producing. You need to continue producing, right? But the bottom line is you can start to build an EXP organization. I'm here to tell you that five, seven years later, my EXP revenue share organization of 525 agents is earning me anywhere from sixteen dollars to $36,000 a month. Now, 
that never became more valuable than in 2020. We all went through COVID and I also went through breast cancer treatment. And when I started looking at that evil beast in the mirror of breast cancer, I thought, who's going to take care of my family? I'm the primary breadwinner for my family. And the blessing was that I did not have to worry too much about that because I had revenue share coming in every month that was able to at least pay my mortgage, pay my bills, things like that to allow me to focus on my health instead of focusing on getting out there and hustling. Now, many of you have kids. And the beauty of EXP is that you can actually leave your revenue share to your kids. They Somebody has to get a real estate license. So out of six kids, only one of mine has a real estate license. But what I did tell him, all his brothers, I'm like, your brother's getting all the money. And they don't like that. So a couple of them are working on getting a license. But it could go into a trust. It could go into something. But the reality is if something were to happen to you, God forbid, that revenue share can pass on to your kids. And we had that happen uh, a few years ago when tragically one of my favorite people on the planet, Reagan Laughlin, passed away. And she luckily, her husband had a real estate license, so he was able to continue to get revenue share. So these are just a few things that you really want to think about. And let's start with what is your why? Like, why would you even bother attracting agents? Why would you even bother with agent attraction? Well, who, why, or what are you building this for? These are questions that only you can answer, right? Some of you might say, look, I uh, want to retire in three years, or hey, I want to be able to take care of my family, or I want to be able to volunteer for a charity organization, <laughs> club, or I want to be able to donate some of this money to whatever it is you want to donate to, right? These are all things, but what is that genuine why that you have? Like, what is it that you, why are you doing this? What is it that you want to do it for, right? And what is your story? Like, you guys just heard me tell my story and how valuable and impactful that is. You can utilize that story for yourself when talking to people. You can come up with your own story. Why are you here at EXP? And how has this impacted or changed your life? Could earning an extra $1,000 a month in revenue share be a game changer for you? Could that pay for groceries, utilities? Could that take a tiny bit of the pressure off of things, right? Maybe you're thinking that's not going to go far, but that's better than nothing. And you're also earning stock, which many of you don't even know how to get into your stock or where it is or what it might look like. And we're going to do next week, we're going to do a class on how to be a great sponsor. So I encourage you guys to get on the books for that next week. So again, what is your story? You can even collect stories of others. I'm going to mute some of you guys who, John, I think you're, John, can you mute, uh, mute yourself? I'm muting him. Um, but collect stories of others, right? So one of the things that we do in our Attract Boss Agent Attraction, and if any of you guys are interested okay. in that program, it is a $197 a month is the cost to join the program. And I'm happy to send you a link. Mm -hmm. And in that program, every day, Monday through Friday from 8 to 10, they do calling. And you get to sit <laughs> and listen to what those um, coaches are saying to people when they're calling people. They're calling people they know, they're calling people they don't know. Lots and lots of calls. And every Monday we have a coaching class at 10.30. So uh, they actually call six days a week. Some of these guys are beasts. And one of the things that comes up many times is people will say, well, you know, I don't really sell much real estate or I, you know, I'm not a top producer like you are, or I'm not this or this or that. There is a guy in our Attract Boss group, you guys, Vince St. Louis. And Vince St. Louis uh, is um, has only sold one house. He has 1,200 people, 1,200 people in his EXP organization. Um, so what you guys can do if you're interested in that program, I'll type it down here. You go to attractboss.com. I think it is, Julie. Yeah. And Vince, he, he wasn't even an agent. So when you think about who you can talk to, it doesn't. They don't have to be real estate agents. Right. Guys. You don't have to be in production to earn revenue share. Vincent came over from a network marketing background. The he guy did. makes like a hundred calls a day. 
he's, he's like a beast. and he calls people he doesn't even know yep i've not been brave enough to do that but he does it. <laughs> so julie you're in that group as well and so is frank what do you guys think about that group oh i love it i'm on it every day and on saturdays um chat with matt.live he's he's committed even on Saturdays and Saturdays is a really good time to get in touch with agents because <laughs> they'll answer their phone a whole lot more than they do during the week. Exactly. So these are some great, if you're guys interested in that program, oh, Mitzi's in the program too, right? Mm -hmm. You're in that program too. Yeah. Yes. Um, and how, how has that helped you, Mitzi? It, it's really helped me to organize um, my thoughts on how to approach this and really think outside of the box Awesome. It's great for objection handling too. You you kind of hear it all, and yeah. it's you know it's just interesting. Everyone has a different kind of personality and different way of of approaching things, and so it's it's amazing because we're we're not all the same, exactly. and what works for some people doesn't for others. And just to hear how they do it, it's it's so helpful. So I just have to make sure that I don't just listen because if you just listen and don't do the work, then you don't get anywhere. It's it's kind of tempting just to to listen a lot but you got to get into action too. And 100%. so we, yeah, I'll just mute it for a little bit. What do you think, Frank? Um, since the program, I've sponsored two icons, which I'm pretty fired up about. And it reminds me every day of what I need to do. Um, it's also taught me posture and it's taught me don't give a shit what the reply is just move <laughs> on to the next person yep. sorry for the language i'm sorry i just um <laughs> we've I'm, heard the word before we're okay i know i just want to be real with you guys um and it it taught me that for a lot of years i've um played it very small and safe and um i'm getting to the point now in age where i'm tired i'm tired i um uh, I've only got three more years at this and I need to put uh, all my effort into it. So um, I want to take off for a month in the, in the month of January to go somewhere where it's freaking warm. <laughs> I'm with you. All right, you guys. So with that said, keep in mind, you know, the goal and you don't have to sign up for a, this was not a pitch fest about a track boss. It's been a great program for several of us who are on it. If it's something you're inter interested in, you can reach out to any one of us who spoke, uh, Julie, Mitzi, Frank, myself, I don't know who else is on here that's in it, but um, if you're interested, keep me, in, keep me posted and let me know. Collect stories of others. That is one of the things that I love is to talk about stories of other people and how that impacted you and your life and what you know, how it's helped them build and grow their business. So these are all things to think about. And when you're listening, listening to people online and you're hearing a lot of these stories, keep a little like tool bag of these stories that you can use, okay? Um, and then how can you help others build and grow? You know, some of the biggest ahas for me here in the last month or so have been in talking about leadership. We all talk about it. We all want to be leaders someday for most of us. But some of us don't know how. And here's the bottom line. You just get up and go do it. You get up and you go put together a class or a meeting or a group of people and you help them, right? Leadership is about how can you help others build and grow and how you help others build and grow is by leading by example. And so I had put my Tuesday tune-ups and my freedom leaders calls on hold for a bit. I was just kind of took a break and I was kind of frustrated because I was feeling like people weren't showing up. <clears throat> and last week I said, screw that. I'm going to do it whether nobody shows up or whether one shows up. And I relaunched my Tuesday tune-ups, which are a great opportunity for you guys to join in. And I've relaunched this freedom leaders mastermind again, every week at 10 AM. And what I'm asking for all of you is who is willing to lead by example and lead one of these classes in the next 90 days? Who's willing to lead a Freedom Leaders Mastermind? Come up with ideas, come up with ways that you can help our organization grow, whether your organization consists of one, none, or 50 or 100. You start with one, right? It's that first step. So a big part of this is 
who's willing to show up to these meetings when you can and lead these meetings when you can would all be great. We're here to help you, support you, do everything we possibly can. But it really helps when we have other people who are just as vested and as excited as I am, right? Okay, so what is your freedom date and what does that actually mean? A freedom date is the date that basically says, by this date, I want to only work if I want to work. I want to no longer be actively selling real estate if that's what's important to you. I want to be able to uh, have enough money coming in that I don't have to worry about my financial future. And what would that date look like for you? So what this looks like is there's a little formula that says you need to have approximately 25 frontline qualifying agents. And again, if you guys have any questions, just pop them in the chat. But what is the difference between an FLA and an FLQA? An FLA is a frontline agent that you have signed up that has joined under you, has put you as their sponsor at EXP. A frontline qualifying agent says that in order to qualify, an agent has to close where the company earns $5,000 well, $5, in commissions once every six months. So they basically have to close two deals worth $5,000 every six months. That means $5,000 in revenue, in um, dollars to the company, right? So in, at eXp, how it works, and again, you guys, a couple of things. Inside your my.exprealty.com, there are several trainings about how the, the breakdown works on FLQAs and what the percentage you pay for agent attraction. You can go watch any of that. But the reality is for every five agents that you attract to EXP, it unlocks another level for you. In other words, Julie is on my front line, okay? So I have 17 frontline qualifying agents. So obviously I get paid on Julie. And then Anne, what level is Anne, Julie? Anne is on my one, two, three, four. So you're five. So she's on my level five. So in order for me to get paid on what Anne does, I have to have 20 agents across. And right now I only have 17. So I love Anne. I want to get paid on what Anne does, but I can't get paid on her right now because I don't have those 20 frontline qualifying agents, right? So for every five agents that you attract, and now, as long as you have 30 agents that are frontline qualifying agents, then guess what? You get paid on all seven levels. So, but the reality is, if you don't have even five right now, the goal is how can you get five and how can you help them get five? If you're able to get, let's just say you get two and help them get two, you will start to grow, right? So, Frank, for example, how many agents do you have in your entire organization? I have 305. And how many frontline qualifying agents do you have? I have nine. Woo, you're getting close. One more. So the good thing is Frank is getting, Frank is only qualified through level three, right? Two, and actually. I freaking hate it. Right. No level, so, level two. He's through level two. And so he's losing a lot of money every month. I'm going to just call him out because I love him so much. He calls me almost every day. And that he's losing money every month because he doesn't have those 10 frontline agents. And I know it's pissing him off. It makes him crazy every day. So Frank, I'm in the same boat. Yeah. Julie, she you're in the same thing. How many do you have, Julie? Well, I just qualified to this month. So I'll be at nine. There you go. But how many agents do you have in your organization? Uh, today, 182. 182. So, right. So you two should be accountability partners. Yeah. <laughs> You're both at nine. <laughs> so the thing is, is it on average, what we have determined is that if you have 25 FLQAs and you have 350 agents in your organization, you can earn up to $175,000 a year or close to $15,000 a month. Would that make a big difference in your life? Right. It would lessen the fights between my wife and I. <laughs> well, I'm on Mary's side, so there you go. Shocker. <laughs> can can I ask a question just to make sure that I'm understanding? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, Emily. Hi. Um, so like okay, so Julie has 185. 
in the organization. So that's 185 underneath you. Correct. So of her 525, 182 is what I my group brought in. So, mm -hmm. but you're only getting the agent revenue from the people that are under the five or like I, that that's where I get confused so like there's the you've got nine so does that mean that you're you, you're, talking or, about you're only family? getting it from the first five people so each five each each of the five FOQAs that you have unlocks another level okay so Emily if you bring someone in on level one you get paid on them all day long Mm -hmm. If that person brings in an agent, that's your level two agent, they close a transaction, you will not get paid on it unless you have five, five. FOQAs on your level one. Okay. Each five unlock the subsequent level. Am now, I, I, think, I think I understand what you're asking. And no, you, you still get paid on everyone. You get paid on all the nine, not just the five. It's just you need five to unlock getting paid on what the maybe, next people are bringing in. Okay, maybe I'm misunderstanding the question. All nine, yes. My front lines, they're my FOQAs. They're on level one. I'm paid on them. And she's getting paid oh. on everything on level two. Everybody on level two. So two. how many do you have on level two, Julie? Do you know? I have 40 on she level has two. 40 on level two. So she's getting paid on all those as well. But everything three and below... For example, and Dalton 55 on, on level three, I'm not getting paid on right now. Right. And, and then I have so once, level four. Once she gets that 10th, that 10th person, person, it'll unlock level unlock. three. I'm still yeah. going to miss out on level four till I get five more FLQAs, either newer people that come in, or I can qualify some of my FLAs, which eh, <laughs> probably not. Um, there's a few part-time agents or kind of like dabbling agents. So for me, it'd be best to find some new agents for my level one than to try to get some FLAs qualified. Right. So what's the difference between FLAs and FLQAs? And thank you for that. I, I understand that other part now. An yeah. FLA sure. is somebody who has not closed a deal in the last six months. Okay. That generated $5,000 in commissions. So okay. They have to close the deal every six months to get. And the reason that EXP did that, you guys, is because there was another company years ago called Connect Realty. And basically, they were just bringing on all these people, agents, so that they could qualify for levels and nobody was producing. Well, as a company, we need agents to produce or the whole program doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. If we don't have active agent sellings, like we don't need a whole bunch of agents parking their license here and selling a house once every two years. It doesn't make financial sense for anybody. So as a company, your goal should be to attract agents that are actively producing. Hopefully at least six deals a year or more is ideal, is the average type of agent you want to attract. But you know, again, things vary. I've had agents who were big producers and they've slowed way down you know, or vice versa, somebody's, you know, only done two or three deals and then they kick it into high gear for some reason and do better. So with that, that will help you earn money every month. So the goal is you're going to want to write down when you have X amount of FLQAs, like both uh, Julie and Frank want to have at least 15 to 20 FL FLQAs so that they can build up their revenue share, right? And we, on average, have assumed that it's $600 per year per agent, right? Now, that's an average. Some do more, some do less. With that, and that, what would that annual revenue earn for you? So, for example, if you had 25 FLQAs and you had, you know, 350 agents, that would earn you an annual revenue of $175 a year, $175,000 a year, or $14,583 a month. That so would work. what is that number that you need to create a freedom date? So for me, my freedom date is five years from now. I'll be 65 years old. My goal is to have 2,000 agents in my organization, right? Earning me over, I think I figured out it was 100,000 a month. And then I can like not, I can just travel the world and have a blast and have a good time and go visit my grandkids and I want to be able to fly all my grandkids in whenever I want to, or be able to take them places at some of my whys, right? Some of my whys are also, my husband, as you mostly know, has Parkinson's disease. 
and the uh, opportunity for him to go have stem cells, which is rather expensive. It's anywhere from 15 to $25,000 and we need to do it at least once a year is another why that I have, right? So I wanna be able to not think about that. I wanna be able to not worry about whether I have the money to do that. I don't wanna have to say, no, we can't do it right now because we don't have the money or we can't afford it, right? That's what's important to me. So what Marguerite, your point is, I don't know. Yes, Frank. I, I just want to make a point, especially to the newer folks and somebody that's building this group. I've made all the mistakes. I built it wrong. I'm just going to be flat out honest with you. I I was taking anybody and anybody that want to join and never pre-qualified. Marguerite sponsored a lady named Gail, and I think that she is building the business right. She's got a hundred and I don't know, 135 in her group, but she's making 15 to 20,000 a month. And that's because she is sponsoring people that are already doing business. If you're going to be in this business longevity wise, I think you should do it that way. Because what happens is we get in this business, we talk about rev share, you sponsor people, you're not getting any money. And then we look at the shiny object somewhere else. And that's why people leave. Exactly. That's just my two cents. And I could be totally wrong, but I I did it wrong. I made all the mistakes. That's why I have gray hair and I have a lot of wisdom. So <laughs> just, just bring in people that are already doing business. Now, I'm not to say that you're going to slide off new people because you never know. I mean, look at us. We all thought that, you know, we were brand new once. But if you're going to bring anybody in, make sure they're doing business. You will be more enjoyable. 100%. Thank you for that, Frank. And while I do love new agents in a lot of ways, it's a challenge and they do take a lot of work, right? So it's something to really think about when you're doing that. So whether you bring in a brand new agent or not, if you're willing to put in the work, again, we're going to talk about how to be a great sponsor next week so we can kind of dig more into that. Hey, okay, Mark, real quick, the numbers. Yeah. Did you change it to 500 underneath the formula? Because I have 600 on my sheet. And then if you look below under when you have, you have, it's 600. Is there, is there a new calculation? Uh, I, like I changed it to 500 and I forgot to change it at the bottom only because I looked at my numbers and my, I mean, it depends on the people you're attracting. Like, like Gail, for example, has attracted all these right. top producers. So right. they're all cappers that that number rises. Exactly. It used to, agent. when I first started with the XP, it used to be in the 800s. And now it's yep. I remember that. that. And I'm like, okay, what have, well, I know they kind of changed the thing a little bit, right? Yeah. Julie, so, I've got your numbers. Yeah. You what? Yeah. I've got your numbers, Julie. What yeah. do you mean? Uh, I've got 600. She has 500. So yeah. Yeah. She up. Yeah. Up top yeah. it's 500 below it's 600. Right. So yeah. I, can I just changed the number because it was more realistic for me and my business. Okay. But yeah. you put whatever yeah. number you want in there. Anyways, it's just. So, kind of yep. So the next thing is, is what is that freedom date number? Okay. And then you're going to project that out for the next five years. So for example, if that you think that you can only bring on five agents in the next 12 months, but then the following year, you think you can bring in more and you can start to build. Again, you guys, there's a point where it literally, you can no longer control it. Like when my organization hit about 350 agents, I couldn't stop it if I wanted to. It's growing anywhere from five to 20 agents a month with me doing nothing, okay? Now, if I help and do a lot more and I get in and I do stuff like this, it could grow dramatically better. So it does take a while for it to do nothing. I mean, to get to a point where you don't have to put as much time and energy into it. But I encourage you guys to write down every year for the next five years. So yeah. what does that actually look like for you in 2024? And if you guys really want to be held accountable, we can create our own little accountability group inside our Facebook chat or something along those lines to help you. Or you can also participate in Attract Boss. So we'll get to that. Hey, Marguerite. Yes. Um, since I'm newer and I I applied to be a mentor, but it got denied. Um, how do you like? How do you get people like nat with being coming off naturally and not like salesy or MLMy to to get people in? Because I know EXP is not an MLM, but I know there's like that stigma towards it because of the structure. 
how do you get people like in my position to trust me and to take that step? Like, how can I convert people over? So here's the best story that I use when it relates to an MLM. You guys have heard me tell the story of Linda Buckmaster, my little famous Linda Buckmaster. Yeah. Okay, so Linda Buckmaster bought a home from me, real estate home, in 1997 for $50,000. It was a HUD home. Linda has since bought and sold eight homes through me since 1997. We're talking 20, 26 years. However, Linda has referred people who have referred people who have referred people eight levels deep, 65 referrals, over $400,000 in commissions in the 20 years since I helped her. Is that an MLM? No. And so here's the reality. We get compensated for contributing to the growth of this company. And you don't have to attract agents. Less than 12% of the 90,000 agents at eXp even attract agents. But the reality, Alicia, is if you could help a couple people do a few deals this year and they could go help people do a few deals this year, could that change their life and your life? Mm -hmm. And a big key that I want you guys all to understand is you do not have to go this alone. If you want me to talk to anybody, you want Julie to talk to somebody, you want Frank to talk to somebody, Mitzi to talk to somebody. We also have a long list of people like Elizabeth Riley and Randy Bird and Brent Gove. You want to get them on a phone call with somebody like that and just watch those examples, it would be a game changer. So if you think about this, the reality is you want to call it an MLM all day, but the reality is where they're currently at is also an MLM. Somebody is above them that is earning money, but they don't get to participate and share in that. Somebody at their Remax office last month, they got a $50 Starbucks card for referring an agent in. Where at eXp, they get revenue share and they get stock for mm -hmm. referring an agent. All we're doing is getting compensated for contributing to the growth of this company. This company went from 1,400 agents when I joined in 2016 to 90,000 agents in seven years. And the majority of those agents are producing were the number one producers in the country. So there you go. There's a lot. Get them on a phone call. Don't do a lot. Let others do the heavy lifting. Watch the videos. If you guys are not watching the model explained on a regular basis, I encourage you to do so. And there are several others. Randy Bird does a model explained. Is it every Tuesday at 1230? Every Tuesday at 1230, you can hop on to. Uh, lots of others do the model explained. You can go on to, to YouTube and get tons and tons of examples. So get to know what this company has to offer, right? And that's going to help you and figure out what their why is. Like if you guys are going to go to a listing appointment, do you walk in and are you like, throwing up all over them? Are you sitting there trying to really consult? Say, what's going on? Why are you selling? What can I do to help you? If you're talking to an agent, you can say, hey, how's life? How's business? You know, what? where are you struggling in your business? And if you can start to build that relationship and help them, then that's where things really start to take off. So let's go here, 20, your next five goals. So what are some ways that you can start to build this? First of all, you can create a list of names. You know, back when I had my brokerage before um, EXP, we used to have this big most wanted board on the wall. <laughs> it looked like the post office, right? And we would take pictures of the agents that we wanted to recruit to our company. And we would put them up on that board, right? And we literally built our company to 120 agents from that board. Agents were like, how come my picture's not on the board? Do you guys not want me? I mean, it became this whole competition thing. It was hilarious. Mitzi? Yeah, I, I have to interject because that's literally how I came to join your brokerage because I came for a Tuesday tune-up and saw my picture and my name on the board. So it was a natural transition when I was ready to leave Lion. Of course, where else was I going to go? Right. Nobody else had my picture on their board. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, you can literally create a simple board, put pictures on it. You can create a hot list of, you know, the agents. So like I have a list in my in my uh, my binder right here of the top agents. We have this form available inside our Freedom Leaders group, right? And so you can make that list of the 100 agents that you want to attract. Who do you go after? You can go after top producers doing 16 to 50 homes a year. 
You can go after newer agents, one to 15 homes a year. You can look at whales and other careers. What do we mean by a whale? Somebody who's doing a ton of business. Vince St. Louis that we talked about earlier was a great example. He was not even in real estate. He was selling Mona V. <clears throat> and he was doing a really well, great business with it. And Brent said, go get your license, man. So he went and got his real estate license. He sold one house. He said, I hate real estate. And he said, I'm going to solely focus on uh, agent attraction. And now he has 1,200 agents in his organization. Okay. Um, let me see. You had a couple questions here. Difference is I don't have to buy the house before I sell it. You can earn a living easier by selling homes than recruiting if the joke doesn't land. That's great. <clears throat> um, to become an icon, yes, you have to do, you have to cap. And close an additional 20 deals after you cap. We can go into icons and teams and stuff like that uh, in a future class. So so who else can you talk to? to your, who are some friends you could talk to? Ex-co-workers, independent brokers you know, right? You can start to build a database. So building a database, create a list of 200, right? And put them in different columns. Like what's your relationship score to them? right? What is your either EXP interest score? Some of these people have said, I'm never, ever joining EXP. Never, right? Never say never. You'd be amazed. And I mean, Gail was a perfect example. The first time I talked to her, she goes, don't recruit me. I go, I'm not recruiting you, Gail. She's like, well, I need your help training some of my agents. I said, sure, I'm happy to do that. Then she was at Remax at the time. Remax said, no, Marguerite can't come in here because they're worried I was going to recruit all their agents, right? Well, I went after their top agents. They're all their agents. So then like a year later, Gail and I did a deal together. She called me again. She goes, okay, my agents are saying I need to join EXP. I want to come, I want you to come talk to me and ask me questions, answer my questions, but don't recruit me. <laughs> like, okay. So I went and I ended up spending three hours with Gail, brought her and her team of 12 agents over. She now has a hundred and whatever. I don't even know how many agents she has. So I never actively called her to recruit her. I called her to build and establish a relationship with her and deep in that relationship. And that's how I ended up getting her. So when, what is their influencer score? Meaning how much influence do they have? Are they somebody that has a big following or are they somebody who's just getting started? And when is the next touch date? Where are some places you can find these people? Past sales, real estate schools, your former brokerage, real trends list, social media, top 10 uh, posts, coaching organizations, events, Instagram, Facebook, referral groups. We just got the big luxury magazine mailed out to our house the other day and I was flipping through to see who I could call, right? Um, so you guys all probably have Real Producer Magazine. Who are some of those big agents? Have you ever called them to say, wow, Julie, I can't believe you got in that magazine. I'm so excited for you. What a huge accomplishment. By the way, how are things going? How's business? How's life, right? How many of you guys are making any kind of calls like that? So- the next big thing is what can we do to create community, get people to events? What I can tell you guys, and this is true since the beginning, big decisions to happen at big events. Every year, Brent does some big events. He does his Cabo event. He does his build event. We have EXP con. We have, I don't know what they're doing with shareholders, but we have these big events. If it's not in your budget to get to these events, find a way, somehow, some way, go cheap, shack up in a room with a couple other people, drive there if you need to, whatever. But big decisions get made at these events. You can also do your own events or piggyback on events. If you're here locally in the Sacramento area, Brent does a big event every single month that you can piggyback on. I know Lee and Julie are doing a lot of events out there. They're doing some live events with their top women. And then they've also done, uh, they're doing weekly Zoom on your, your, your weekly Zoom that they do. You can do happy hours. You can do, uh, uh, Elizabeth Riley does a thing called aha meeting where every, once a month they get together and they get a bunch of agents together and have lunch and they come up with mastermind ideas. So, I know that sometimes it feels overwhelming. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be a lot. You can even just say, hey, let's all meet at Starbucks and have a powwow once a week to just hold each other accountable. Not only just for production, but how can you build and grow your business? What I know is you the accumulation of the five people you get around, right? Who are you hanging out with? Are you hanging out with the people who are doing the wah, 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 wah? 
Or are you hanging out with people that are doing things and, and doing activities and stuff going on? Great job. Mitzi's doing a business planning workshop with Pete Middleton in Tennessee, right? Um, they're getting the event 100% covered from sponsors. That's the way to do it, right? It doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be big events. It can literally be a happy hour with six other agents. It can, I'm having our holiday party. Mitzi and I are having our holiday party this Saturday at my house. And they'll probably be half agents, half clients. I invite everybody to every party I have, right? Because I'm building and establishing those relationships. How can you connect uh, with seven key leaders? Yeah, Alicia, you're doing an event. Is it today or tomorrow? When's your event? Uh, it's next Thursday. Next Thursday. Okay, good. I thought it was today. I was Don't thinking. miss it. She, and what is it you're doing? A little business planning, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's just invited and you're doing it at your house? Yeah, because I'll be technically working. <laughs> Perfect. So see, there you go. She's going to have a few agents come to her house, sit around, chit chat, have coffee, have cookies, right? Have a little business planning event. Fantastic. She's inviting EXP and non-EXP um, agents. So there you go. I'm doing a uh, buyer broker agreement with one of the managing brokers, and I got the uh, lender to supply the food and the space because buyer broker agreement is the hottest thing on the planet right now. So it, you know, you just got to be creative, and and everybody's loving it, and looking forward to it. Absolutely, great job, Frank. I'd love to know about that. I might come if I can make it. So. Um, so you guys, these are things you can do. You can do educational things, but a lot of us sometimes have a tendency to sit around and wait for somebody else to do it. Lead by example, you guys, I would love, I will help with anything I can with your events. If I can get there, I'll be there. If I can help contribute and help you build it or help design it, call me, reach out to me. I'm available to help you. So again, who are some key leaders that you can meet with in 2024? Who are some people that you would love to just sit down and chat with? I can't even tell you how many times people say that they want to call or meet with me and then they never do. They never follow up. So who are some key people that you could sit down and chat with or get together with or have a quick Zoom call? I started doing my podcast mostly so I could talk to cool people, right? And oh, Alex is doing a vision boarding thing. That's awesome. Vision boarding is so cool. Okay, so let's fly through this. I started yakking too much. I got behind. If how many of you are going to Cabo? Anyone going to Cabo? Awesome. Okay, good. If you're not going to Cabo, I encourage you to go. Again, you can find right now they're doing, I think, buy one ticket, get one free or something like that, right? Um, and they're doing some other things. So think about what you can do. I, I don't think we have a date yet for build. But again, if you guys can get guests to these events, I'm telling you what, rarely does a guest come to these events and walk away and not join EXP. The numbers are very, very high. So ideally, if you can, uh, if you're in a position, you might be able to help out with their airfare registration hotel. We don't buy airfare. I'll book a hotel room because if they don't show up, then I can always pass off the hotel room. But these are things that you can do. So here's the thing, you guys, is what does your schedule look like? When are you actually selling real estate? When Brent did this the first two years, he sold real estate full time and then he took every Friday afternoon, just three hours a week and made phone calls and called people, right? When will you play? When is there rest family time? I did my goals versus priorities class yesterday and we talked a lot about this on Tuesday Tune Up. And when will you prospect? Are you willing to take two to four hours a week to change your future? How important is it, right? Are you capitalized? Do you have some money set aside that you could help with? If not, what are you going to do to change that? And where could you possibly get capital, right? Could you possibly borrow some money? I know when Brent, his first couple of years, he borrowed like $400,000 to help him cut back on his production so he could focus on this. Obviously, it paid off. He now has 19,000 agents in his organization. Can you have an exist executive assistant part-time? <clears throat> I know that several of us have virtual assistants that work anywhere from 10 hours to 40 hours a week that we can't even live with. Like I cannot live without my virtual assistants. They do so much for me that allows me to do what I want to do. And they're better at it, right? Changed my life. Totally. Can you put a general manager in place? Maybe you're not there yet, right? Do you have a small business hub? Let's talk about some lead generation pillars. Where can you find these people? 
First of all, your sphere influence. Can you go through your phone? Most people have at least two to 3,000 people in their phone alone. You have people there. You can engage with people on social media. You can send handwritten notes. You can invite them to an event or share an item of value once a month, right? Identify their pain points and identify their goal and vision for everybody on that list. How can you help them accomplish their goal? YouTube is another great resource. Mike Sherrard has built his organization to 1,800 agents. Three years ago, he didn't. He barely sold real estate and didn't have any agents. Now he's got, I think, like 1,600 agents. And he put, all he did was publish videos on YouTube. And I love when he showed his first video. He said it, he showed his very first video where he was sitting in a, a, a booth at a restaurant with his iPhone camera. And he goes, I had like a dirty shirt on and hadn't brushed my hair. And he just kept doing it, kept doing it, right? You can learn about funnels, send up, set up funnels. I know Mitzi has been spending a ton of time learning about funnels. Uh, you can make sure that your videos are asking and, and posting a direct hook, right? Three out of four of these videos need to be value-based and you can grow your subscribers by 500, 500 people a month. So you can do this either via YouTube, you could do via TikTok, via Instagram, Facebook. Whatever it is that you work on, that's the best place to do it. But build and create that following. How about events? We just talked a little bit about that. Attend six non-EXP events. Are you going to events outside of EXP? You guys, I built my whole career on going to like buy referral only events. And Tom Curry wasn't around then. But, you know, a lot of these guys, I went to these, Craig Proctor, I went to all these events and trainings, which is where I built a lot of my relationships. In fact, how Julie ended up in my organization is because a guy named Randy Toby was stalking me on Twitter because he was trying wow. to sell his Lion Desk program. And I ended up meeting up with him at an Inman conference. When I joined EXP, I reached out to him to talk to him about it. He goes, well, I don't actively sell real estate, but I have these friends, Lee and Julie, you need to talk to them. Next thing you know, I'm talking to Julie. Julie has now been a very, very good friends of ours and in our EXP organization, right? So are you attending non-EXP events? Are you attending your local association meetings? Are you attending, like what things are you attending? And can you bring one influential guest to every event you attend, right? Invite 20 agents per week to an online event. I host two, Tuesday tune-ups. You guys can invite anybody to those. They're every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Invite people to them. Get people to come on. There's always tons of value in every Tuesday tune-up I do. You can also invite guests to our Freedom Leaders Mastermind every week, right? You can host an online event of your own every month. I know Julie has really taken off. They've taken off with their, their program, Modern Agent Blueprint. Uh, her and Nicole and, and Lee, that thing is like- Yeah, that thing's, awesome. um, we've got like 3,500 um, members in there now. And I just talked to Nicole about it too about how we're going to even make it better in 2024. And That's fantastic. So that is amazing. Invite, yeah. You guys can invite people to that event, right? Host your own event, bring people to EXP events whenever you can. Okay. Lead follow-up. Here's a simple lead follow-up. And I'm going to post this presentation in our group when we're done. I use a program called CRM Grow that is just exclusively for my agent attraction piece. I use follow-up boss for my, my real estate business. But, you know, create kind of a little organizational chart for yourself. You guys start using AI. It's pretty impressive, right? Uh, get your list of 200 people in that CRM and follow up just like you would your real estate business, okay? Following up with things like birthdays and milestones and events, right? Video messages. I just sent out three video messages this morning to friends of mine that have birthdays going on, right? This also is a wealth chart. If you guys have not seen this wealth chart, you can go again, go into our Freedom Leaders Mastermind, go into forms and files. This wealth chart is there. If you want to be really brave, fill it out and text it to me on the first of every month. The first of every month. Let's be on the call for 15 minutes and then. What, John? Oh, no, that's right. I'm good. Thank you. And, you know, you want to be really brave. Text it to me every month. There's an entire training as well in the videos in Freedom Leaders on how to use this wealth chart and how you guys can either just have a paper one like this, or you can have a big one printed out. It's at my home office. I have it on my wall. 
So I encourage you guys to do this wealth chart and you do it every month. Here's the bottom line. You guys don't just talk about it. Be about it. What can you do to actually do it, right? Lead by example. Be the kind of sponsor you want. If you're not thrilled with your direct sponsor, you guys have seven people in your upline that you can reach out to. I'm one of them. So if you haven't called me or talked to me or reached out to me for any reason, I'm going to give you my cell phone number right here in the chat. And any one of you can call me any time. I promise you, I always answer my phone. If I don't, I'll respond pretty quickly. So <clears throat> build your list of 200 and complete all the categories, right? Block time out and or touch all 200 and disposition them somehow. Complete and update your wealth chart and send your upline with goals. So my direct upline is Brent Go. So I have to start sending my goal, my uh, wealth chart to Brent Go, right? Complete a business plan for your lead generation pillars. Choose a database, upload a list of 200 and set your next touch points. Delegate what you can't do and do what you can. We also have a website, you guys, that many of you may or may not know about called thefreedomleaders.com that just about all of this is available on there and lots of resources to help you out. So also what we have that you can tap into and participate in is Tuesday tune-ups, Freedom Leader Mastermind. Brent Gove does a weekly team meeting that he does live and in person and via Zoom. Lots of things in workplace available. I know that uh, Pete Middleton also does a, a Thursday mastermind with uh, Mitch Roback and Gail DeMarco. I don't know who else is on that. <clears throat> These are the influencer groups and meetings. If you've attracted any agents at all, you're in one of these groups. And I'll tell you what, my beta call that I have every Thursday at 10 a.m., I do not miss. It is like set in stone in my calendar. If you're not yet a beta, beta, you're more than likely already in the leadership group. And you can see that every Wednesday at 10 a.m. in Workplace, they have these meetings. If you're just at the builder point, you're just getting started, you guys just make it a commitment to go to this meeting every week because you're gonna get around people who want to build and grow. So I would encourage you to take a picture of this right here. Again, you can go into Workplace and figure out which group you're in. As you can see, if you're a builder, you have at least five plus frontline agents. If you're a leader, you have 10 plus frontline agents. If you're in beta, you have 200 plus agents total in your organization and you have to have 15 FLQAs. Julie is getting closer. That's the Frank, goal. That's Frank, the you goal. should have been in beta a long time ago. So get your butt in there. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Frank should have been in beta a long time ago. He's had the count of agents. He just doesn't have the- He's got the number, yeah, just the FOQAs. Yeah. There's a big jump from leader to beta as far yeah. as like FOQA goes. Marguerite, what are you chirping about now? I'm saying uh, how come you're not in the beta group yet. You should be. calling us out, Frank. I love when my wife busts my balls. <laughs> you love it even more when I do. <laughs> I was talking about my work wife. <laughs> So you guys, here's the deal. Get in these groups, get around people who are doing this. You all have the potential. So I would like, as we wrap up, because I only have a couple more minutes for each of you to chat in, put in the chat, how many total agents you want in your organization in the next 90 days. How many do you want to add to your group in the next 90 days? If you have zero, you got nowhere to go but up. Let's see it in the chat. How many agents do you want to have? Mitzi wants to have five. Alicia, one. Emily, two. Jacqueline, one. Katie, I'm at six. I want to be at eight. Anne, one. Awesome. So uh, John Natavidad, five. John, you're a leader. You need to get your hiney going, mister. I'm, are you coming to my party Saturday? <laughs> yes, I'm bringing some lumpia. You're bringing Olympia. So you guys, yeah. funny story. I invited years ago, we had an event and I invited John because he's Filipino. So I was so excited he was going to bring Olympia. He shows up with Kentucky fried chicken. I go, what? what? <laughs> I go, you cannot come to my house with Kentucky fried chicken. So there you go, guys. So here's the thing. Do not do this alone. If you are trying and talking to even one agent, get me on the phone, get Julie on the phone, get Mitzi, Frank, get somebody on the phone with you to do a three-way call. In the Freedom Leaders Mastermind, in the Freedom Leaders Facebook group, there is a video with 
Casey G. Ha that is extraordinary. It's one hour. I encourage you to block out the time, watch it on Agent Attraction. And please send me a text or a message that says that you've watched it to the end. It's phenomenal. So that's all I got today, you guys. Hopefully this was really valuable. I will post the recording inside our Facebook group. And next week, we're going to talk about how to be a great sponsor. So get your people here. Any other questions before we wrap up? Oh, Vilia. Marjorie, I have a Yes, Julie. Oh, I just, I might need your, I need your help. Like either today or tomorrow. <laughs> okay. With the agent I was telling you about. Who's yeah, shoot me a couple to... times. Yeah, I'll tell and... you right now. Can I tell you right now? Yeah, what time? Uh, Today at three, that's at three o'clock. That's already passed. <laughs> tomorrow, 11, 8 a.m. your time tomorrow. Uh, I can do 8 a.m. tomorrow. Okay. Send All me right. a calendar invite. Will do. All right. Thank you, guys. Any other questions? You're the best, Marguerite. Seriously. All right. Love y'all. Have an amazing day. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. You too. Thank you.